Hi guys, Every Knife Guy here, and we're trying something a little bit different today. Um, I've just been watching some Shot Show videos the last few days, as you probably have too, and seeing some of the new knives coming out from the from some of the more major brands, at least. And this evening, I was sitting and kind of going over the offerings from ZT. You guys know I'm a big ZT fan if you've uh, been around the channel very much, and I like Kershaw too. And uh, for a while now, I've been thinking of. Uh, maybe picking up another Kershaw, I just didn't know what to get. So, of course, I'm interested to see with see uh, what they're coming out with in 2016 as well. So I was sitting, going th starting to go through that this evening and uh, kind of plan on going through all the offerings and deciding what I may or may not want to pick up this year. So I thought, why not do it together? And uh, then maybe we can get some uh, conversation going in the comments about who likes what and, uh, and uh, what they should have done if we were in charge. So... Uh, we're we're making a leap of technology here guys, this is going to be my first screencast video uh, it's just an app on my Android phone and we're going to try a screencast hopefully the audio is okay and hopefully the visuals are okay and uh, you guys can see what I'm doing, what I'm looking at but you won't be able to see me, you won't even see my hands or fingers or anything so that's the plan, let's uh, go ahead and get started so I was going to look at um, just ZT and uh, Kershaw, the Kai brands um, I will, I might extend that to looking at new offerings from Benchmade and uh, CRKT and a few other brands. There's there's no point in doing Spyderco, and I'll tell you why, because if we skip over to this tab, uh, you need to go and check out Neil the Knife Guy. He did an excellent video on Spyderco's 2016 catalogue, which you'll soon see is down here. This one here in the middle row right now, second from the left. Uh, Spyderco 2016 production guide. Now you can see by all those uh, little watched icons that I tend to watch his videos. Uh, there's a couple there from today that I need to go and catch up on. But go check out Neil's channel, give him a sub and uh, see what he has to say about the 2016 Spyderco models. That was a good video, I enjoyed that one. And uh, But I'm going to look at, first of all, ZT tonight. And they've got four new blades for 2016. And I had pretty mixed feelings on these to be honest. Um, I've had a proper look at them today. I'd only seen them in a, in a couple of shot show videos. A uh, proper look at them today, and uh, it's starting to grow on me a little bit. But uh, of the four, the first one they have on their page now, they've got a separate page as with Kershaw with all the, all their new knives just in one place, so we can quite easily through that. Uh, the first one we come to is this, which is the zero zero nine five BW BW, of course, for Blackwash, and um, this is kind of the only one of the four that jumped out at me as being a. Uh, a surefire winner as far as I'm concerned. I'll open this up and then you sh guys should get the slideshow um, so you don't have to just look at one image and listen to me talking the whole time. Um, is this going to rotate through itself? It might not. Maybe I need to, maybe I need to swipe through for you guys. So uh, as you can see there it's all black wash, blade, handle, blacked out clip. It's got the same decorative looking pivot as on the my 0452 that I have and that nice kind of five spoke design which is pretty cool. Um, frame lock of course you can see there you can tell by the little screw I could do with a pointer on the screen here, I don't have a pointer but I'll, I'll have to just describe what I'm looking at uh, the little screw at the front of the lock bar there means there's a steel uh, lock face insert as with pretty much all their knives I think these days uh, you can see the product code in the blade 0095BW and uh, made in USA of course S35VN you can probably see as well uh, can I, do I have zoom enabled here? yeah I can zoom in a little bit for you guys and uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. There you go. So you can see the product code and stuff. So looking pretty cool in the back. Some nice little uh, machined grooves on the cutout of the lock bar. And uh, yeah, pretty cool design. All in all, looks like just one standoff at the back there. And uh, no lanyard hole. So let's even zoom out a little bit again. Just have to give me a few minutes to get used to using this screencast, guys. It's a little bit weird. Um, look, love the look of that blade. I really like the blacked out look. Love that harpoon shape. And um, with that kind of protruding top swedge on the blade, lots of nice belly on there, and uh, yeah, really cool looking knife. Two hundred seventy-five US dollars, which initially kind of knocked me back a little bit. I thought that seemed a little extreme, but then um, speaking again of the four fifty-two carbon fiber that they have, um, I got that in a trade, and, and for a long time it, it was it was a little bit out of my price range, and uh, the list price of it on the website is actually two seventy-five as well. So. Um, looking at that, it's just going to be kind of uh, you know one of their higher end blades, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Of course, the retail should be uh, a little bit different from that. So, and all of them say this: the item isn't available yet. We're excited to show you what we got. Blah blah blah. But further down here, we do have some information on it. Um, 
I'll, you guys can pause this and read it if you like. I will just go over the basics for you. Of course, we already said it's S35 VN, harpoon style blade, blah, blah, blah. Um, doesn't say, it doesn't say designer on this. I don't know if this was actually from an in-house design or a collaboration or if I'm missing something there. Anyway, uh, titanium handle, of course, titanium frame lock, uh, blah, 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 KVT ball bearings, everything you'd expect from uh, modern uh, zero tolerance flipper related products down at the bottom. It won't bother going into that because uh, this video is going to take long enough as it is. So if we go through here, we should see it's reversible clip, reversible clip tip up only left or right. Um, DLC black wash finish on the blade. Uh, blade length 3.6 inches, so it is a little on the larger side. Overall length 8.4 and 5.3 ounces, so by no means a, a lightweight blade, but uh, very cool, very much to my taste. Um, you can see their size in hand approximately. Um, that's just all kind. Of, that's that's the sort of blade that I think ZT does best. Uh, big, bold, and pretty badass looking in, in that in that uh, black wash finish. So uh, that's the first one. Let's move down, or this is going to take all day. Um, the other ones I'm probably not going to spend quite so much time on. The 0220, 0220, again 275 uh, MSRP on this. And I think this was the Jens Anso collaboration one. Um, we'll have a look at it in a second. Yeah, Danish knife and toolmaker Jens Anso, of course, makes all those fancy carabiners and his own uh, custom knives and things like that. Uh, S35VN as well, uh, modified drop point, blah, 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 KVT ball bearings, all the usual stuff. Uh, these are very much kind of um, paint by numbers for ZT. They're flippers with ball bearings and plenty of titanium, S35 VN, and uh, this one is a little bit different. And I gotta be honest, uh, this was my probably my least favorite design when I first saw it, and it still is. I just can't get over that little blue oval at the rear of the handle. I just think the guy, uh, the Kershaw uh, ZT representative guy in the video that I watched, described it as adding class with a ZT medallion. And medallion in my head is not a word that. I tend to associate with class in the first place, but that little um, blue splodge on there just does not doesn't fit with the knife in my head. I can't see why they did that. Um, they're never the best for their branding. There's a lot of a lot of unnecessary billboarding goes on with ZT knives, but uh, in this case, just more than ever, I think um, you know ZT on the pocket clip as well. I just think there was no need to, to whack that on there. And of course, the other big thing with this is that bright orange anodized backspacer. Now, I love the design of that backspacer, the way the lanyard loop kind of pops up at the back, although I don't know how that's going to feel in the heel of your hand. Um, I do like the design overall. I think this is based on one of his... Um, oh, thanks, Andre.FLM, for liking my photo on Instagram. Um, yeah, I, I think this is based on one of his, his own custom designs, but... It, the design overall doesn't really offend me. What offends me is that blue splodge and the, the big garish orange backspacer. Like, I'm all for splashes of colour, but I just don't think that works very well. I don't know about you guys. Uh, feel free to tell me I'm an idiot and I'm, I'm not progressive thinking enough and whatever else, but that's just, just really not doing it for me. Let's check the specs on this. Uh, tech specs. Uh, made in USA, blah blah blah, left right pocket clip tip up, blade length 3.5, so slightly smaller than the first one. Custom aluminum backspacer with built-in lanyard attachment. Um, titanium frame lock, all the usual, overall length 8.4, 6.2 ounces, so this one's even heavier than the previous blade we looked at. And uh, that's really all I'm going to say about that one, I don't want to bash on it, but it's really not my cup of tea. Um, that one will not be, be taking a place in my collection anytime anytime soon. This one, there's a, there's a lot of uh, a lot of thirst for this one in, in the uh, ZT fanboy crowd. 0450 carbon fiber. 450 of course is the the smaller relative to the 452 and was also based off that one, the blah blah whatever the number was before it. Um, the custom Sinkovich design. Now I was never a massive fan of the 450 in its kind of all titanium, I think it's all titanium isn't it? All titanium livery. Let's see if they've got a suggested model at the bottom. Yeah, there's the original 450, and it's a pretty cool looking knife, but it just never really floated floated my boat completely. The design of it, and it is a bit smaller than I typically like uh, my ZTs, but 
holy hell does that look good in blacked out blade and carbon fiber um yeah the show the, sorry the lock side is still full titanium uh Sinkovich design flipper of course and look at that in the backspace what about these two little uh, bright green anodized standoffs i think that's a pretty cool touch as i say i'm not against um pops of color on big uh, brutal looking black and titanium colored flippers i mean that's there's nothing wrong with that at all. I think it can look cool if done really well, and I think that is done well. Um, it's bold because not everyone loves green, of course. I don't know how uh, how customizable they are. Of course, you can change them out for aftermarket, but I'm imagining the knife will come factory with only the one color. So you could potentially be alienating a few people by doing something like that. But um, credit to them, I think that looks awesome and really fits with the knife. I love the carbon fiber with the blacked out blade. And as you can see there, it's, it is a little smaller in hand than I would typically uh, typically like a ZT blade to be. But overall, that's pretty badass, and I think they're gonna they're gonna sell out pretty much instantly. I think if we're being honest with ourselves, let's zoom out. And 225 uh, MSRP as well, which is pretty reasonable. Um, and obviously, you're gonna get it for a bit less than that. S35 VN again seems to be the the flavor of the year. And, uh, oh, hold up, sorry, I'm moving too fast. I'll let you guys pause that. Of course, you can just go over to the ZT website yourself and have a look. But if you're too lazy to do that and you'd rather just uh, read the text on my video, that's entirely up to you. Um, while it's a smaller, more gentlemanly knife, the 0450 CF proudly lives up to the overbuilt standards for which ZT is well known. So there you go. And, uh, yeah, don't need to say any more about that. You probably already uh, want to go and buy one. So let's just go back and see what the fourth offering was and this is another one that i am oh wait a minute how many have you got here one two three four five offerings this year six why did i think there were only four anyway there's six sorry so we better pick things up a little bit here um zero four five six uh two two hundred seventy five dollars msrp and i think this is a les george collaboration and this was one that I really didn't like. First of all, I saw a picture on Instagram and I actually commented, I can't remember whose it was, and I said, I like it apart from the, uh, oh no, sorry, this is a Sinkovich design as well. And um, I said to them, said in my comment that uh, I liked it apart from the plastic looking pivot. Uh, but the more I look at it, it's actually growing on me. It is, uh, it's got a custom aluminum backspacer. Uh, where does it say about the pivot? Da 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 da. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, it's based on his popular custom, Dimitri's popular custom knife, the pole. Uh, and it's a very cool 3D handle. If you look, it's actually kind of sculpted. There's kind of that flat, which it forms a spine on the scale of, of the handle. And you've kind of got two sort of sloping off leaves on either side of that, which is, which is cool. I mean, I'm just not really into the stubbier sort of looking blades. Um, but that grind is pretty badass. It just, to me, it just looks like the tip of the knife got broken off. And I'm not against worn cliff sheep's, sheep's cliff worn foot blades by any means. Like, I like that style. I'm just not sure it particularly suits this knife. I could, I would like to see more of a, more of a blade like the 450 on there. Um, love that blue, love that blue pocket clip. So if you put the pocket clip together with that pivot, that actually looks pretty sweet. It's really growing on me, this one. This is probably the biggest grower for me this year. Let's just check out the specs. So this is the 456. Tech specs on this. Uh, blah, blah, blah. All the usual stuff. Main the USA KVT bearings. Custom blue backspacer, aluminum clip, pivot hardware. Um, steel CTS 204P two tone finish. Um, okay. Did we not see, was that the other one I'm thinking of that said it was S35? Oh yeah, it does say, excuse me, S CTS 204P blade steel is wear and corrosion resistant, takes an exceptional edge. And that's not a steel I'm familiar with. So anyone who has used that and has any experience, do chip in in the comments, please. So that's definitely grown on me. It's a little stubby. What I was actually meant to be looking for was the sizes and the specs. So let's go back and see that. Blade length 3.25 inch, so it's not terrible. It maybe just looks a little, a little smaller than it is. Um, overall length 7.7, 6.6 ounces, so it's certainly not a lightweight blade, um, but pretty cool. There's no shots here of this so-called um, anodized blue backspacer, but you can tell there. You can see the little ridges. 
going up the rear part of the spine so there's obviously the same color as the clip and the pivot I'd imagine uh, for the backspacer so pretty cool um, not saying no for sure now this one um, I'm undecided on uh, this one I think is a Rexford design collaboration 350 MSRP so it is not a cheap knife 0804 CF and it's quite simple i initially called it bland on uh, somebody else's video and got a little got a, <laughs> got a few people uh, riled up about that i think but it is just a little bland to my eye it's not really it's not really floating my boat i think one of the details that popped out to me you can see there at the heel of the handle the carbon fiber handle scale there's a little cutout for the clip um which where's can we get the other side hold on so there's a clip, obviously that slots in and holds it in place. Now, I love knives that do that, such as the Hinder knives, of course. But why, oh why, is there not a filler tab in there? Why is there not a carbon fiber or blacked out or, uh, you know, anything filling that hole? Because it just looks ugly and looks unfinished. And if I'm paying $350 for a knife, I don't want to have to go and pay extra for an aftermarket filler tab to go and fill that in. I think that's just, that's crappy. I'm hoping they're plan on doing something with that before they start selling it because that would put me right off for such a such a minor detail but it you know it just sticks out to me um, ZT and Todd Rexford have, clean, have teamed up to create the 0804 CF based on the Gamma again this one CTS 204P uh, DLC coated blade sorry I'm scrolling way through here but um, I'm trying to not make this take too long uh, larger knife, high performance, uh, there's 450 down here. What am I looking for? I'm looking for tech specs. Uh, usual stuff again, all the same. Custom aluminum backspacer. Carbon fiber front, titanium back to the handle. Blade length 3.9 inches, so it is fairly large. 8.9 overall, weight 5.1 ounces, so that's not terrible for the size of it. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's just, it's not to me $350 MSRP cool. Obviously, it's not going to be on sale for that. There it is in the hand. It is a fairly large blade. I do like the blade shape. I think I like the blade a lot more in the handle. Um, but it is just a little bit simplistic for me. That back, the spine you can see there is just a little bit too, too straight. And I don't know if I'm feeling that pivot with the USA made on it. I think it, it would look better with something like the the uh let's go back i think it would look better in a little bit more uh you know if i had something like this something like this pivot on it i think that would just give it a little bit of interest right in the middle there and make it look a little bit less clunky but of course it is based on um on rexford's custom design which i'm not familiar with so that may be just true to his design i don't know anyway uh and the last one here this is the les george which is 225 MSRP. This is a 0909, one of the easiest zero tolerance model numbers ever to remember, probably 0909. Uh, let's just go through the pictures of this first. Uh, sculpted G10 by the looks of it. Um, Main USA S35VN. Same old pocket clips year in, year out for ZT. Uh, no great advances being made there. Obviously, they're not listening to the hordes of people that say they don't like them. I don't really have an issue with them, but. Seems to be a lot of people don't like them. Uh, I don't particularly like this knife in any aspect. It just looks stubby. Um, the Les George from last year, I forget the, the model number on it. Um, it wasn't really for me, but it looked at least elegant. This just looks a little, uh, just a little basic, I think. Um, what else we see? Uh, da -da -da. Based on his popular Talos, which in terms of production version led his first custom knife, the FM1 uh, S35 VN blade steel, G10 handles, extra thick liners, four four inches, four inch blade. Doesn't look like it. Let's just check the specs and see. Uh, blade length 3.8 inches. Yeah, it is actually fairly large then. 8.5 overall, 7.5 ounce weight. So they're not joking about the extra thick liners. It's even. If you see there, right at the top of the screen, extra thick liner is even listed as a as a um, as a feature, and this is of course liner lock rather than uh, rather than the uh, usual frame lock. So interesting. Uh, deep carry clip, left right tip up only, ball bearings as usual, 
uh, did this one have a picture in hand? Because to me it doesn't look very big. Um, probably the last one will be. Uh, but yeah, I guess it is fairly solid. It just maybe it's just the depth from the, you know, from the spine of the knife down to the bottom of that flipper. It's just quite deep because that's making it look kind of stubby to me. But that could just be my eye. So, so there we are, guys. That's the ZT lineup, and I'm conscious I've probably been. Uh, I can't see a timer on here, and I can't remember what time I started, but it's probably been run on for ages, so we'll probably go through the care shows reasonably quickly. Uh, there's an another sort of uh, load of CT swag for this year, uh, quite like in their gear as usual, but I'm probably not going to make the effort to go buy their stuff because it's just a little bit geeky. Um, I would quite like that mug, um, so I might have to ask the wife for that for for uh, Valentine's Day or something romantic like that. And then down here, oh, there's a Les George from last year, and that was kind of a bit more my thing, 0900. And down here we're getting into all the current range. There's the 452 that I own, same pivot on there, you can see, um, as the one I looked at earlier, and there we're getting down to the pens. No new pens at the moment, which is a little bit disappointing. I was hoping they were maybe going to come out with some of those, but that could be a, a mid-year release or something, who knows. So... I think that about wraps up for ZT. We'll just quit scroll back through them just for a second so we can get another little look. Um, blah blah blah. Do like that a lot. Um, I love that. That's probably gonna have to be a purchase for me this year. Okay, uh Kershaw. Now there's a whole host of stuff coming from Kershaw this year, um, which is exciting. I like when uh, companies come out with a bunch of new gear and of course uh gives you some new options. I'm not sure what they're phasing out, uh, if anything, but um, so we're going to skip through the first ones quite quickly because they are the launch models which may be of interest to you but personally I'm not really in any way interested in automatics which aligns quite nicely with the fact that I'm not allowed to own them in Canada anyway. So there's some new versions of the launch, this one's obviously an Emerson collaboration, you could tell that by the blade and handle shape before you even saw the logo. Uh, $180 on that one, so let's actually let's just check out what steel we have and stuff there uh, in case anyone is, in, is interested because I know the launch series is quite popular for automatics. Um, let's just look at the CPM 154, let's just look at the tech specs, push button lock, reversible pod clip made in USA, so that's a plus of course. Uh, push button CPM 154 stone washed, anodized aluminum handle, um, blade length 3.4 inches, so it's not, not spectacular but obviously it is an Emerson collaboration so that will appeal to quite a lot of people. Uh, this one I like a little better, the launch 6, but again not really my thing and doesn't matter because I can't want it anyway. Launch 4 seems to be a mini version of the automatics so it's good that they are broadening that range and it does seem to be quite popular and people like them so that's that's fair enough to them. Uh, the Link is quite a cool blade. This one's part serrated so that kind of turns me off. Uh, that reminds me a little bit of uh, that first ZT we were just looking at. There's Link serrated with what looks like a like a nylon or or maybe a G10 handle, let's just check and see. What is this, $60 MSRP. Made in the USA Link, now there's an all-American brother with an extra edge. The Lynx 1776ST offers a partially serrated blade for additional cutting versatility. 420HC stainless, okay. Uh, Stonewash finish. Handles are matte finish glass filled nylon, okay. So that's not really too awesome. Speed safe. Um, let's go a quick look at the specs here. Flipper, speed safe, liner lock, reversible, made in USA. So, good to see a couple of uh, USA made blades there for sure. Uh, the Pico, that's quite cool looking. That looks like a uh, ZT to me. Uh, it looks a little bit like that uh, Les George. Now, $45 MSRP. Uh, custom blah, 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 blah. This is a Les George, so that would explain why it looks like one of his. And this is where we start getting into all the 8CR13 MOV blades, guys, and there's a whole raft of them. Uh, and that does kind of put me off a little bit. I wish sometimes Kershaw, like I know there's nothing wrong with that steel, but it, it isn't the world's best. I think we can all uh, come to terms with that fact. And I wish they would just, um, you know, some of the, a few of their blades just uh, ramp up the steel a little bit. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, but just increase the quality a little bit, increase the price a little bit, and uh, you know it would appeal more to people who would commonly buy the ZTs. I think to to pick up a few of the cheaper Kershaws as well as there maybe uh, one or two ZT purchases as well. So blade length two point nine inches, three point seven ounces, 
open length 6.8 and uh, that's quite a cool design um, let's look in reverse and that's a frame lock design that's a pretty hideous pocket clip though if we're being honest uh, moving on what else do we have there, I did briefly go through this earlier but I haven't spent haven't had a lot of chance to really uh, sit and look at that that's a bit of a zany design I'm not going to go into all these guys because frankly they just don't all interest me um, at least you'll get to see what's there and if there's something that I miss that you like of course you can head over there and check it out here seems to be a new uh, Emerson collaboration um, CQC 9k the decoy that's quite a cool little blade not really my thing at all so I'm just gonna skip past that I like the pivot on that though that's a nice touch um, Valmara it's a little wacky um, I'm not spending too much time on these because I know there's a few further down that I did like the look of. The West End's fairly interesting. Let's have a quick look at that one. And it, I'm going into these more just to show you if there's any other pictures, guys, because you know all the usual stuff. The steel is always pretty much going to be 8CR, 13LV. A lot of these are speed safe. Uh, a textured 4G10 front handle scale. So what, what the hell is 4G10? I didn't realize that G10 was that premium material that we had to create for G10, but apparently we do. Uh, glass filled nylon front, so um, I'm not sure what really what that is or why they're saying that or or what that's going to feel like. It doesn't look like it would feel particularly awesome in your hand, um, but it may be fine. I don't know. I'm not too sh uh, I don't know. That, that design's a little bit meh for me. I'm, not totally sold at the spline now that's quite cool that looks like it's in a, a black all over black wash finish uh, let's just get a little look at that yeah i do quite like that with the black hardware uh maybe a little stubby for my taste again not really feeling that pocket clip pivot is cool and that over see how they've combined the uh pivot and over travel there let's see even if it'll let me zoom in on this a lot of web pages of course don't let you zoom in but this one seems to be come on over to the next image yeah you can see there oh come on why are you not zooming in you're zooming in but you're just not moving okay here we go yeah look how they've combined the pivot with the over travel there that's quite a neat little detail um i like that and what else text specs on this flipper speed safe frame lock reversible clip deep carry uh black wash finish 8cr 13 mov um blade length 2.9 inches so it is quite small and stubby but i do quite like that um that appeals to me that one what else grid not particularly feeling that it's a little bit uh, cheap looking to me i really don't like that um identity it's a bit of a confused identity if you ask me i'm not really sure what's going on with that handle blades okay not sure about the handle uh, that I quite like, and this is called the Rove. It looks like another glass filled nylon handle, perhaps. Let's get a picture of the reverse of that. Uh, pretty simple liner lock design, but looks a bit liner lock flipper. Uh, work knife, EDC knife, outdoor knife, flipper, speed safe, liner lock, reversible. It's just a paint by numbers, guys, and it's more just finding the one that kind of fits your taste, isn't it? They're all kind of much the same handle glass filled nylon, 3.3 inch blade. Uh, reversible clip uh, very much paint by numbers there's nothing nothing too too wacky going on here now this one kind of stuck out to me earlier this is the showtime and i really do quite like the look of this um i may have to to indulge let's have a look at tech specs before we go into the uh, into the other picture flipper speed safe frame lock reversible clip same steel as usual steel handle with black oxide coating um three inch blade so that's nice 3.7 ounces let's see what they're saying about it a non-traditional gentleman's knife um could be what the non-traditional gentleman is looking for well perhaps i don't know am i a non-traditional gentleman i'm unsure handle is steel black oxide coated and contoured for solid grip frame lock ensures secure lock up Decorative hex pivot enhances the showtimes, show off good looks. And this is a Todd Rexford collaboration, which if you look at it, yeah, you can certainly see that. Um, I like the pocket clip on that with a nice understated K. Um, frame lock design looks interesting. Well, there's a very large, let's see if we can get this guy to zoom in here. He's not, they're not big on zooming in. 
Okay, there's a very large gap, it looks like, between the between the lock bar and the frame of the knife. That's quite interesting. So the tang of the knife must protrude quite a bit, so you'll have a very visible lockup. But if you look at the the back of, well, the right-hand side, if you will, of the pivot, there's really not a lot of material there between that opening and the pivot, which is a little bit, bit unusual. I don't know if it's a concern. It's probably not really a strength thing, but it's definitely interesting design. I would be uh, I'd be quite keen to pick one of those up maybe and try that out. That is a showtime. Uh, that barge is just hideous. I think we'll move on. The fat back. Um, now this stuck out to me earlier because the fat back has a very thin back as far as I can see. Um, it's kind of a barracuda shaped knife. Uh, let's have a look at the reverse of it first. Go on. Their slideshow has been a little bit fiddly. Sometimes they are on mobile devices. The back of it's a little, a little bland, I guess. Um, the fat back does not have a fat back. In fact, it has a rather slim handle, but to ensure you always have an extra secure grip, it does have some extra fat texturing on its glass-filled nylon handle. 8 CRMV blade steel, dagger-like shape, speed safe, uh, blah, 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 all the usual stuff. Um, let's go back again. I'm noticing on these... Uh, so flipper, no thumb stud, thumb stud, flipper, no 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 thumb stud, not sure, uh, thumb disc, flipper, no thumb stud, flipper, no thumb stud, flipper, no thumb stud, flipper, no thumb stud, and then autos. Are you noticing a pattern there, guys? Because I certainly am. And that's a little bit of a shame because I do like thumb studs as well. Like I, I like my knives that are flippers only, but I do like uh, when you have a thumb stud as well. I think I'll skip past this one. This looks like a tool knife, which uh, I'm just not really into the design of that at all. Blade there, yes, handle no, but what's going on with that lock? Is this an auto or is this a, a ball bearing lock or what is this? Uh, $60. Uh, start with the blade, drop point, uh, black oxide coated, hawk lock, alright okay so the hawk lock automatically locks into position when it's open, when you're ready to close the handle pull the lock, lock, hawk lock excuse me, slider back towards the knife butt and fold the blade in simplicity itself, the induction handle is lightweight, strong anodized aluminum with a textured faux G10 front insert for sure grip. Uh, so hawk lock which I have no experience of sounds a lot like spider cobalt bearing lock crossed with axis lock although I see the button is only on one side, so not big into the design, but um, good to see a variation in lock type at least, so that's something. Um, what else do we have? Now, these all say new on them, as you can see, guys. I'm going by the website. If anyone knows these have been out for a while, I do apologize. I've, I haven't really kept up with Kershaw stuff for a while. Uh, flipper, no thumb stud, and not particularly feeling that design. Intellect handles a little bit zany on there. Now, this I quite like. This looks a lot like the, oh, what was that Zero Tolerance, the really expensive one last year it was. Um, 935, 953, there's so many bloody model numbers, I have no idea what's what anymore. Um, again, it has quite a big gap around the lock bar, you can see. Hinder style over travel, is this a Hinder design? I would certainly, um, I would certainly put money on it based on what I can see there. Uh, yeah, designed from Rick Hinder and Kershaw, a strong liner design is Barracuda Sleek and engineered to provide great grip control, great tip control. Clipped spear point style blade looks great, slims blade for excellent piercing capability. So, um, so thumb stud and flipper, let's just check the technical stuff. Flipper, frame lock, reversible, speed safe, 8CR, 13MOV, 3.3 inch blade. Uh, handle steel with that titanium carbonitride coating that was on the uh, cryos, I think. 4.2 ounce weight, so I quite like the design of that one, but then I do tend to like Hinder designs, so that's why it probably appeals to me. Uh, the zero tolerance I'm thinking of was his one that was based on the Eclipse. Uh, what what the model number was that? I really can't remember. Um, that's okay. That's... That's different, uh, not really my thing, called the grinder, the spoke, um, no, not so much. There's little, um, 
little uh, maintenance tool, I guess. Uh, that's new, that's quite cool looking. Uh, ration, that's like that CRKT uh, eating tool. I have one of those. Um, now these are quite cool. Uh, collaboration with Jen Zanso, who does the pocket tools and knives and stuff, and very high-end stuff. Collaborated with Kershaw to release his carabiner designs. Uh, $20. These are not the titanium versions that he produces. These are stainless. Uh, bottle opener, cord cutter, and um, I think technically self-defense um, if you if you are so inclined. That blue is pretty cool. I quite like that. I could definitely see myself having one of those or indeed that black. Um, but again, that's a love it or hate it um, sort of thing whether you're into those. What else do we have? Now the cinder, I thought this was interesting. The cinder is priced at only ten ninety nine. <clears throat> Going somewhere that you want, you want to carry a non scary knife. Uh, then what you need is a knife. So it's plenty of style and cutting power, but a smaller keychain size. Um, where does it say the blade is just one point four inches long? Um, and it's a crazy looking little thing. You can see bottle opener on the back there. Um, thumb studs. Yeah, just a little keychain knife, I guess. But that's kind of cool. <laughs> Um, certainly enough for opening opening packages, doing some small EDC tasks. Um, what else we got? I like the Kershaw pint glass. That might go along nicely with my uh, ZT coffee mug that my wife is going to be buying me now for Valentine's. Uh, Kershaw t-shirts, hats, blah blah blah, poster banners, counter mat. That's quite nice. I like that. Um, might get one of those for my reviews. Countertop displays, single blade stands. Um, Weeder fan needs to get himself some of these for his uh, very fancy display cabinet. If you haven't seen that, go find go find Weeder fan's channel and check out the video he did quite a while back, probably about a year ago or so, I guess, on his uh, display case that he rigged up for his knives. That thing is awesome and uh, is definitely definitely goals in terms of uh, displaying all your knives and stuff. So that's the Kershaw lineup. I have no idea how long we've been recording this, guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that, that'll do for now. I hope you enjoyed this. It, it's a bit of a waffle, but uh, hopefully uh, it was interesting to hear my thoughts on it. And I'd be very interested to hear yours, which is kind of the whole point in doing this. So do leave comments if there's any that stuck out to you as being particularly hideous or particularly nice. Any that are definite buys for you or that you think should be buys for me. And uh, we'll go from there. So... Uh, appreciate you watching as always. I'll be back with more videos soon. And I may do some of these on other brands, as I mentioned before, depending on feedback. So let me know, guys. Have a great day. Cheers.